Hello, this is Andreas, the developer of Better Touch Tool. Um, as some of you may have already seen, I have been working on a new user interface for Better Touch Tool. And today I want to quickly walk through it, show you um, how it looks like, and my reasoning behind some of the functionality and how it's done. So, Better Touch Tool has been around for almost 10 years now. It initially started as a very small side project of mine right after I switched from Windows to Mac OS. Back then it was a very simple app and it didn't need a lot of UI. However, over the years I kept adding new functionality, new trigger types, and it just became a much more powerful app with lots of functions, a lot of options, uh, and it became quite complicated. Also, it became very hard for me to add new functionality to Better Touch Tool because the UI was kind of fixed. So always when I wanted to add something new, I needed to adapt the UI, which was very annoying and lots of work. So with the new UI, I want to make it much easier for me to work on Better Touch Tool, to add new features, um, to add new things in general, like, um, I mean, new trigger types, like the MIDI triggers I just added, and stuff like this. Also, I want to support multiple languages. So far, only English has been supported, which isn't even my native language, as you may have noticed already. I have now um, started by adding German, which is my native language, um, and Japanese, and simplified Chinese. So we already have four languages supported in total now, but I want to keep adding more and more um, over the next few months. So maybe let's have a look at the new UI now. It's still accessible using this menu bar icon here. Um, and it, it now shows configuration and old configuration UI. Um, as you may expect, configuration is the new one. But the old UI it will still be available for at least a year. Um, this is because I'm sure there will be bugs in the new UI. There will be things missing. and I don't want to annoy anybody. So you can still use the old configuration UI, but new functionality will only be added to the new one. Also, the new UI is only supported starting with macOS 10.13. So if you are on 10.10, 10.11 or 10.12, you will need to use the old configuration UI. So the first thing the user sees after opening the new UI is this screen. It's pretty much empty. On the left side, you still have the app list, like in the old Better Touch Tool UI. Um, on the right side, you currently only see this add first trackpad gesture for all apps. Um, so let's try to do this. Let's add a trackpad gesture. Um, after clicking this button, it will immediately pop up the list of available um, trackpad gestures. For example, let's just select the three finger tap. After doing this, we will we see that the configuration for this trigger is now completely done in the sidebar on the right side. Here you can configure all the things related to the gesture. For example, the modifier keys that are necessary to trigger it, the repeat rate, um, and some advanced stuff over here. Um, but we want to um, trigger an action using this gesture, so let's try to add one. For example, we could create um, a capture screenshot action. So now if I do a three finger tap, it will start um, capturing a screenshot um, and it will just work. So now we have configured three finger tap, tap and we have assigned one action. We could assign more actions, which will just be executed in sequence. Um, for example, a keyboard shortcut um, or some predefined action that is available in the list. And of course, we can add more triggers. Let's say we want also a three finger click um, and we want to assign an action to that. Maybe mission control. Um, yeah, you see, it's pretty, si pretty simple. You can, you have the list of gestures here. 
and on the, in the right column you see the um, assigned actions. Um, you can delete the gestures again using the buttons on the bottom or you can use keyboard shortcuts. One new thing is also that we now have a menu bar which makes some of the functionality um, more visible and more accessible. Um, for example, you can directly access the presets here. You can move triggers to a specific presets, preset, and so on. So far, we have been looking at the column view of the UI. There's also a list view, which you can uh, trigger here on, with these two buttons. You can switch between them. Um, the list view is much more like the old um, view in Better Touch Tool. It shows all the configured triggers in a list. Um, and you can see the assigned actions like this. So for the three finger tab, we have capture screenshot, then we have the shortcut assigned and mission control. It doesn't make sense like this. It was just an example. Even in the list view, we have the sidebar for the configuration. Um, and to um, configure, for example, a trigger, we just click on that trigger. Like here's three finger tabs, three finger clicks, four finger tab. Um, but if we want to configure the action, we click the action column. So for example, here we can click on the mission control and just assign something else. This is pretty simple and works pretty well. However, for me as a developer, the greatest thing about the sidebar is that it's generated completely dynamically based some on some uh, description file. So all the UI elements you see here are defined in a JSON-like structure um, and the UI then just renders it. And this means that if I improve some of the UI elements, they will improve everywhere in the app. In the previous UI, I would have to go, would have had to go through all the UI, through all the views and change everything. With the new UI, um, I, it's just one file I have to change and then it will be available throughout the whole UI. And this is much, much easier than in the previous UI and it will save me a lot of work and make it possible to add things much faster. Um, so let's, for example, have a look at a different trigger type. If we switch to the touch bar, um, you can see that the sidebar, it changes a bit. Um, it had, has much more features here because um, the touch bar, it offers things like button colors and icons and font colors and whatever. And the sidebar, it just changed. So yeah, that's pretty nice. You can also um, undock the sidebar if, if you rather work like this. Um, I usually don't do it, but some people may like it. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the app sidebar on the left side. There you can still see all the apps that have configured triggers. If you configure global triggers, they will be shown here in all apps, um, but you can also add app specific triggers. Um, to add a new app, you just click the plus bot button on the bottom left and select one of the, one of the apps. When an app is selected in the left sidebar, you will uh, notice that the sidebar on the right side also changes. It shows app specific settings. These are things like to disable specific functionality for specific apps. For example, if I don't want window snapping uh, for Finder, I can just enable this here. Or if I want to show the Finder touch bar all the time and hide the better touch tool um, touch bar, we can just select this here. Yeah, so now let's try to add a keyboard shortcut for Google Chrome. To do this, we would select Google Chrome. We select the keyboard um, trigger type here, and then we just press the plus button. Now I record the shortcut. Um, you can see it immediately um, showed up here. Then I can assign some action, <clears throat> and I'm done for now. In the new UI, the settings that belong to a specific trigger type are always available using this button right next to the trigger type selection. So for example, if we go to trackpad and click the trackpad settings button, a new window will open up um, 
that has a section trackpad where it has all the advanced features that you may never need, but it may be handy to know where they are. Um, yeah, so let's close this again. These are available for all, for almost all triggers, but not for all. So for example, Siri remote doesn't have a specific, doesn't have specific settings. Um, yeah. In the new UI, the preset selection has moved to the top right here. It still looks pretty much the same as in the previous UI. Um, so let's, for example, activate some presets that I have imported here. And now you can see the UI is filled with many, with many triggers, with many, um, apps on the left side. And it looks quite different than when it's empty. So you can see all the icons that have been assigned. You can see the necessary um, modifier keys and things like this. And if a trigger is disabled, um, it will show this crossed out eye on the left side, or in the um, column view, it will show show it like this. And you can easily um, disable or enable a specific trigger by, by pressing Command D, or by right clicking and say Enable Disable Select a Trigger. Um, yeah, some functionality that has been accessible in the old UI directly from the main window has been moved to the menu bar. For example, the touch the trackpad live view. So it's now here under view show live view. Um, and you can still access everything there. Also, for example, um, the usage, usage information has been moved. Um, yeah, and just, just have a look at all the menus, uh, you will see what has been moved there. Now let's have a look at some of the smaller features of the new UI. First, have a look at the left app sidebar. Here we can now collapse or expand the list of applications just as we like. This makes the UI a bit clearer and easier to look at. Next thing I would like um, to look at is how to edit script widgets with the new Better Touch Tool UI. So let's select um, a shell script widget here. You can see the whole configuration is available in the in the right um, configuration sidebar, but um, the script is a bit in a small field. On the one hand, we can now um, increase the size of the field like this. But we can also undock this whole um, script editing UI and to make our changes here in a bigger bigger window, which we can expand as we want to. The next thing I would like to look at is groups. The new UI offers groups for all of the trigger types. Previously, they have only been available for touch bar. They can be created using the little um, group add group button on the bottom. So let's just do it. It will create an empty group. We can give, give it a name. And to open it, we can either press the space key or double click. And then you see it will switch to the um, contents of the, of the new group. Here we can add just any kind of um, trigger that's available for the current trigger type. Another thing I would like to show you is that there's now a search functionality in this column view. Here we can just search for some of the available triggers. Um, yeah, maybe useful for people with many, many triggers. The next thing that you may already have noticed is that there are some color indicators here on the left. They show you which preset a specific trigger belongs to. So currently I have these blue ones and the green ones, but there, every preset has a different color. And if I ena enable other presets, like for example, the Golden Chaos preset, there will be more colors shown. So you can see now red is Golden Chaos, blue is my default preset, and so on. So these just show you which um, preset a trigger belongs to. And if we want, we can now also easily um, move some triggers to a different preset. We can use the menu bar for that and just select the preset that you want to move the triggers to and click and it's done. Now you can see they are all blue. 
Another great thing about the new UI is that you can finally do multi-selection. So we can select multiple triggers and move them around in the list um, or copy them and move them to a different app or something like that. And for some of the trigger types, uh, currently it's actually only the touch bar trigger type, we can even edit the attributes of multiple triggers at the same time. This is pretty nice and saves us a lot of time. It's currently a bit limited, so it doesn't show any values here. But if we change the values, they will save for all of the selected triggers. And it will be empty afterwards again, so this is currently a limitation that, that I will um, improve in the future. Um, one more thing I want to show you is that you can always easily copy triggers um, using Command and C or using the menu um, bar item. And they are actually copied as JSON to your clipboard. So if you paste them, you can see the complete JSON content. The icons are encoded as base64. But the rest of the attributes are just readable here. You can paste them in the forum, in the community forum, or share with other people if you want to. So I think we have now seen all the basic concepts of the new UI. We've seen the app list, the trigger list, the action list, configuration sidebar, and some more little details. I won't show you everything now in this video. I think you will discover the little things while using the new UI. In general, I want to thank all the users that have been so active in the community forum and have helped me with lots of feedback um, and with great help, especially a user called Yuiko. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. He really provided lot, lots of great ideas. Um, he created some of the cool icons that are used here. Um, so thank you very much for all your help. And I think it was a very nice development process. So lots of user feedback and lots of ideas from the community that I've implemented and I'm still implementing. So I couldn't do everything in the first release. This is also something you should keep in mind. This is the first, first release of the new UI. I'm sure there will be many improvements in the future. This is the very first thing and I'm now working to improve it based on the new flexibility that I've gained. I will improve the sidebar, the form elements, and basically everything about the new UI. There will be many things that um, will improve over time. So yeah, in general, have fun with the new UI. Have fun using Better Touch tool, and I hope you like it. If not, please post any questions and feedback and bugs in the community forum. This is very helpful for me. Um, and I will fix and improve as fast as possible. Thank you for watching this.